Hey guys, Sherry Fox here with What The Fox. And today, we're going to be installing a ring doorbell. Now this one's wired. Now if you don't already have a wired doorbell, you're going to need to install the wires, or they do make a battery-operated ring doorbell that may be a better option for you. However, the installation is still the same. You'll just omit the wiring. Let's get started. The first thing we want to do is cut the circuit breaker to the doorbell. Now that the circuit breaker is off, let's just go ahead and remove the existing doorbell. You're going to expose two wires and two screws. All we're going to do is loosen the screws so that we can release the wires. Now let's go ahead and take a look at our package. Depending on which package you purchased, they're going to give you several different things. Now the first thing we don't want to do is get overwhelmed because there's just a lot of these items that we're just not going to use. You're going to see some installation tools, several different face plates, the ring doorbell itself, which may already have a face plate on it, what they call a Chime Pro, which just looks like a little speaker, but what this actually does is act as a bridge between your router and your ring device itself, extending the Wi-Fi range and increases the signal to the rest of your system. It also amplifies alert sounds, so you know when someone trips a motion sensor or if someone's ringing your doorbell. But what we're looking for are the mounting brackets, and I will go over each one so that you can make sure and point your camera in the right direction. Okay. Here's what we're looking for. Now, depending on your package, they're going to give you several different brackets. This one is tapered on one end, and it is called the wedge mount. This one is thick on one side and thin on the other side. It is called the corner mount. They also give you one that is called the retrofit. The retrofit has a leveler in it. But if you'll look on the back, it also has four plastic pegs. What this one is for is so you can just sit your camera flush on the wall. But if for some reason it doesn't sit flush, you can break these pegs off to allow it to sit flush against your wall. So let me show you how these work. Let's start with the retrofit. You'll just position it flush to your wall. And of course, if it doesn't sit exactly flush, go ahead and break the pegs off the back until it does. And as you can see, the camera will just sit in a straightforward position. This bracket can also be painted to match your wall color if you prefer. Now let's take a look at the wedge mount. This is the one that tapers down on one end. Let's say you want your camera to point in the upward direction. You will simply place the thicker end of the wedge mount at the bottom so that when you place the camera on the bracket, it will have a slight tilt upward. But what if you need your camera to point down? Just flip the bracket to where the thicker end is at the top so then your camera can have a slight tilt downward. What if you need your camera to point to the right? Then we will use the corner mount. This is the one that is thick on one side and thin on the other. To allow your camera to look to the right, you will place the thicker part of the bracket on the left so that your camera will point in the right direction. But if you need your camera to point to the left, just flip the bracket over to where the thicker side is on the right. But what if you need your camera to point up and to the right? Well, you can use the wedge mount and we can point it upward. And then let's take the corner mount and let's put them together. You can put these together so that way when you put your camera on the wall, it will point upward and to the right. That's what these brackets are designed for. Or, let's say you want it to point downward and to the left. You can do it that way as well. 
but you really just want to use, you want to use any of these brackets that is going to be best for your situation. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the installation tools provided. Again, let's not get overwhelmed because some of this you're just not going to use. They provide you with a small screwdriver. On one end, it's a star shape. On the other end, it's a Phillips head. We will need this later, but let's just go ahead and set this to the side for now. You are also going to find a drill bit. And if you're trying to install your ring doorbell into anything besides wood, you will need this. But if you are installing your ring doorbell into wood siding, then you will simply just use the screws and not the anchors or the drill bit. They also give you some wire extenders and some wire nuts. This is just in case the actual wire coming from your doorbell isn't long enough. That way you can kind of shift your doorbell and put it in your desired location, if need be. They do provide you with some different length screws. Remember when we were talking about putting more than one bracket together? If your situation calls for that, you're going to need a longer screw. So just be sure to use the correct length of screws that's going to pass through the brackets and into the wall when mounting your ring doorbell. These additional wires are nothing more than an alternate wire for your Pro Power Kit. You're probably not going to need this. You're only going to use this if the pre-attached wires do not fit your doorbell. So now you're probably wondering, well, Sherry, what is a Pro Power Kit? This is a Pro Power Kit, which they do provide. This is nothing more than a device that's going to make sure that you have enough power sent to your ring doorbell for it to function properly. On the label, it says, install me first on your pre-existing doorbell inside your home. And on the back of the label, it explains why. This is going to be the first thing that we are going to install. But if you'll notice, it has a small piece of adhesive. That's so that when we connect it, we can stick it on the inside of our doorbell. That way it doesn't move around or muffle the actual sound of the doorbell itself. And the last thing we have here is nothing more than an attachment for your Chime Pro. You will just slide it in the back until it snaps into place. That way you can plug it into the wall. So let's go ahead and get started and install our Pro Power Kit. The first thing you want to do is just go ahead and remove the cover from your interior doorbell. Take a look at your Pro Power Kit. You will see two wires. However, on your doorbell, you're going to see three screws. One will say front, one will say rear, and one will say trans or transformer. The screws that we will be connecting to is the front and the transformer. We don't want to remove the screws. We just want to loosen them so that we don't disturb the other wires and give ourselves just enough room to where we can slip the wires from the Pro Power Kit up underneath, tighten the screws down until we have a snug connection. And not to worry, it doesn't matter which wire from the Pro Power Kit you connect to which screw, as long as you only connect to the front and trans or transformer screws, like so. Now let me show you what's going to happen if you do not peel the adhesive off and place the Pro Power Kit away from the door chime. If you just stick it up inside of your doorbell, this is what your doorbell is going to sound like. It will sound muffled, so you need to remove the adhesive and place it to either side of the door chime. And then your doorbell should sound like this and sound normal. The next thing we want to do is install the Chime Pro. And you want to install this before you install the actual ring doorbell itself, because it does act as a bridge between your router and your ring doorbell. You will simply take the plug-in attachment and slide it down until it clicks into place. And then just plug it into the wall. Now you will download and open the Ring app. Allow your notifications and create an account. Click Setup Device and then select Chime Pro 
and then follow your in-app directions. Your Chime Pro will notify you when it is in setup mode. Welcome to Ring. Chime Pro is in setup mode. Follow the instructions in the Ring app to continue. Once you have successfully set up your Chime Pro, we are now ready to install the Ring doorbell itself. I ran into a couple of different issues when installing because of where the wire was located. I am installing this into Hardyboard and it creates a lip so it wouldn't allow the bracket to lay flush against the wall. I could cut an additional piece of hardy board to lay in behind the bracket, but I chose not to do so. Another option would be to remove the sheathing from the black and the red wire to make them longer. Because the red wire and the black wire are thinner than both of them combined inside of the sheathing. And as you can see, the sheathing just isn't going to allow the bracket to lay flush against the wall. Another option would be to cut into the hardy board and just move the wire all together. But I decided not to do this either, and I thought it would be a good opportunity to show you how to use the wire extenders just in case you needed to. Because these wires are thin as well and should lay nicely behind the bracket without disturbing the functionality of the doorbell itself. So let me show you how we're going to do this. If you'll look on the end of the wires, they already have them pre-cut. You will just pull the plastic coating off to expose the wires. They do provide you with the wiring nuts needed. It does not matter which wire you connect to which extension. You will simply twist the wires together and then cap it with the wiring nut and then twist the wiring nut until it is snug. I like to twist and tighten in a clockwise direction. And then you'll simply repeat this for the other wire. And then you will want to secure each wire with black electrical tape by wrapping it over the wire and the wiring nut like so. And then I just push the wiring nuts back into the house because I'm going to lay the bracket on top of these thin wires and get a flush mount. Also covering the hole from the doorbell wire itself. It will hang over the lip of the hardy board just a little, but I'm okay with that. Once you have chosen your appropriate bracket or brackets and the placement of your bracket, you will simply straighten and mark where you will put your screws and or anchors. Use a leveler if needed. Just remember, if you're placing this on wood, you do not need to use the anchors. You can just use the screws. We are placing ours on hardy board, which is a mixture of sand, cement, and wood. So I will be using anchors. However, the anchors and the drill bit they provided I felt like was a little bit of an overkill for my situation. In other words, a little too large. So I decided to use my own anchors and my own drill bit. In doing so, I will have to use my own screws as well. Maybe if I were installing this on brick or stone, the anchors provided might be appropriate. Use your own judgment when deciding which anchors and screws to use. This is just what worked for me. If you are using anchors, you will simply drill where you marked. Just be cautious not to drill too close to any existing holes you may already have. If your anchors don't seem quite flush with the wall, just give them a little tap with your hammer. We decided to use the corner mount and allow the camera to point to the right. So we placed the thicker side of the bracket on the left. So whichever bracket, screws, and or anchors you decide to use, just line the holes up and secure the bracket into place. Your ring doorbell may already have a faceplate on it. You're going to want to pop the faceplate off before you connect the wires. Now look at the back of your ring doorbell. You will see two screws. If you did not use the wire extenders, you will just take the wires and twist them around the screws and tighten them down. If you did use the wire extenders, just slip the hooks underneath the screw and tighten them down. And it doesn't matter which wire you connect to which screw. Just make sure you have a secure connection. You will notice an orange button on the side of your Ring doorbell. This is the button that you will push when the Ring app asks you to put your Ring device into setup mode. There are two holes, one located on the top and one located on the bottom of your Ring doorbell. Use the screws provided to secure your Ring doorbell into place. 
do not replace the faceplate just yet because we have to be able to access the setup button once we restore power. So let's go ahead and do that now. Once you restore power, you're going to see a series of lights. This video may not reflect the series of lights that you're going to see. However, if the light at the top of the circle is flashing, your Ring Pro needs time to prepare for setup. This can take up to an hour, so be patient. Once the flashing stops, you're ready to set up your Ring doorbell in your Ring app. Go to Devices and hit Doorbells. It will ask you to scan a barcode. You can find this in your Ring package. After you scan the barcode, it will ask you what you would like to name your Ring doorbell. Then you will click, I've already installed it. It will then ask you what type of bell your doorbell has, whether it's mechanical or digital. Continue to follow your in-app directions until it tells you to press and release the setup button, which is the small orange button located on the side of the Ring doorbell itself. The Ring doorbell will notify you once it is in setup mode. Ring doorbell is in setup mode. Follow the instructions in the Ring app to continue. And then you will just continue to follow the instructions in the Ring app and allow it to join your network. We are now ready to replace the faceplate. You will find a small security screw and the head of it will look like a star. Using the screwdriver provided and the star bit, insert the screw at the bottom of the Ring doorbell. The lights flashing in this video do not reflect what your lights should look like. After setup, your lights may flash for a little while, but when they stop, your Ring Pro is ready to use. And it's just that easy, guys. For technical support on video recording, motion detection, notifications, and much more, please refer to your manual or visit ring.com forward slash help. I hope you guys enjoyed the video, and if you have any questions or comments, leave them below. And if you like what we're doing here, guys, smash that like button for me. And can I encourage you to subscribe? I would greatly appreciate it. But when you do, don't forget to click that little bell. That way, when I upload new videos, you'll be the first to know. This is Sherry saying you guys can do this easily. Thanks again, guys, for tuning in to What the Fox. Until next time, take care.